Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now this video is going to be a direct continuation of the last video, and in this uh, part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're starting to learn how to use Transex. So at an absolute minimum, you must have seen the previous video or else this one isn't even going to make any sense. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and just pick up where we left off. Now I went ahead and reset TransX just so we could do a quick recap here at the beginning of this video. Uh, notice that uh, you know we have select target and it's set to planet moons and it's, now it's set to none because I've completely reset TransX. So again, as we did in the last video, we're just going to press plus plus to get the moon selected. Then we're going to go forward on this side because notice right now it says stage one of one. And over here it says stage one of one, but notice when I press forward, it actually creates that stage. So now we have stage two of two over here. And again, we want to VW, press VW on this side to bring up the encounter view. Now on this side, we want to uh, press VW to come over to maneuver. And remember when maneuver mode is off, we can't do anything. The variables don't do anything. The adjustments don't do anything. So the only thing we can do is turn maneuver mode on. And now we can go through our variables by pressing the VAR button. And as I stated before, as we press the VAR button, we just cycle around those variables. Now, the first thing that we want to do once we have maneuver mode on is we want to add in enough velocity to get our uh, to get ourselves uh, out to the moon. Take a sip of water. And the way we want to do that, it starts off when you first turn maneuver mode on, it starts off in the course mode, and that's actually pretty good. So we can press plus plus to uh, put in enough prograde to get out to the moon. But one thing I'll show you too is kind of a trick. If we uh, just quickly do a reset here, we the, the amount of velocity that you need to get out to the moon is, is very consistent. It's almost always the same. So if you want to press the enter button down here, you can actually just type in 3150 press enter and that gives you a really close approximation to the amount of velocity that you're going to use and from there you can do an adjustment here and then just lower it down a little bit take away that little bit of velocity that you don't need or add in a little bit more if you need a little bit more but that I don't know if that's actually a shortcut or not but that's just one other thing that you can do and remember these adjustments uh, when you're at the media the course setting it's that adds in a lot of velocity all at once, and when you hit minus minus, it takes away a lot of velocity all at once. And when we go to a medium setting, it's a little finer. And then again, we've got fine, super, ultra, hyper, and micro. Now we want to set up the timing of the burn because when we uh, when we first set this up, this is saying that if we did the burn right now, this very second, we would be on this trajectory. We would go way out here. And this is, would be our arrival, that hypothetical dashed yellow line shows where we would arrive. And then this dashed yellow line here shows where the moon would actually be. So you can quite easily understand that if we're here and the moon's there, we're not going to land on the moon. So the way we adjust the timing is by moving the, the, the time forward. And right now, you know, this says maneuver date. But uh, think, think of this also as not only date, but time. So when, when we say date, we're not talking about doing the burn tomorrow or a week from now or something like that. Uh, this could also just be maneuver time. And in this instance, the time is just going to be uh, probably about 60 minutes from now, something like that. So we, wanted, uh, we, don't, we do not want to adjust the date on the course setting because if we do that, it's going to have an imp it's going to change the date by like 24 hours at a time and remember we we need to do the burn uh not very far into the future just like an hour from now not not tomorrow or the next day so the first thing you want to do is actually adjust the uh setting here so that you're not on course and it's probably faster if you go backwards with it so instead of pressing adj press minus aj until you get to ultra uh, alternatively, from course, you could press ADJ to medium, to fine, to super, to ultra. I guess it doesn't really make any difference which way you go. 
But now as we press plus plus, you can see this hypothetical kind of goes forward. And that's because, let me actually do a few setup here for a second and I'll see if I can show you why that is. I want to uh, scale to view craft. The reason why it's changing is because we are saying that we want to do the burn where where in our orbit around the earth we want to do the burn so let's go back to the view maneuver and keep moving the clock forward so this is where we currently are this green line is where we are right now and as we press this plus plus this is showing where where around the earth we are going to do the burn and you'll notice that as i get kind of around to this side these lines are starting to converge they're getting very close together and you'll notice something else let me back up here a little bit you'll notice that over here on the view encounter side and this is actually why we have transx open on both sides you'll notice that once we got reasonably close you saw a bunch of information over here so let's go back and do that again let's move the clock a little bit forward now you can see on this side that the minimum altitude is uh, 53,000 kilometers, so it's not very close, but nevertheless, it's this means that we're getting reasonably close to the moon. This green line shows what our orbital trajectory would be at the moon, so we would, fl if, if we did the burn as we have it set up over here, we would uh, have a fairly close pass to the moon, but we would miss it and then keep on going. But notice as we keep moving time forward, in other words, we we're going to, Instead of doing the burn at that point, we're going to do the burn, you know, we're, we're, we're saying we're going to do the burn here. Now we're, we have an even closer pass to the moon. Let's go forward a little bit farther. And notice as I'm pushing the time around, we're getting closer and closer to the moon. Until finally, we are actually uh, basically hitting the moon at this point. You can see the minimum altitude is all the way down to uh, just uh, seven kilometers, six kilometers at that point. So let's go ahead and view back over to setup here and just uh, change the scale to view back to all. But I just wanted to kind of show, you know, what was happening there uh, at the, uh, w why we were getting closer is because if we did the burn from this point, then it's going to raise, uh, from, that, from that point there, it's going to raise our apoapsis out this way. So we're going to be arriving we're going to be arriving at the moon's uh, orbital altitude over here. But as we scoot around the Earth, as, as we scoot around the Earth, our, you know, we're raising the other side of our orbit. So instead of raising our orbit out this way, when we do the burn here, we're raising our orbit out that way. So that help, that, that's what allows us to get out to the moon. Okay, scale to view back to all and VW back over to maneuver. Now, uh, there's a few things that we can take into account, uh, but for this first example, we're just going to keep it fairly basic, but something that we'll cover in another uh, example of how to use TransX to go to the moon, we'll cover how to also start setting up your base alignment uh, while you're all the way back here at Earth. Because remember when we did the, tr uh, the flight using transfer MFD, we went uh, to the moon, and when we got close to the moon, we started setting up we started setting up our um, our alignment with the base. And we're going to do the same thing in this example just to keep it simple. But something just to keep in the back of your head. In a future flight, we'll, we'll refine this method and we'll get to see how we can use TransX not only how to get to the moon, but how we can also start setting up the base alignment while we're still here at Earth. All right, so we're basically done. We have our plan set up and we're pretty content with it. Uh, there are some a couple of minor points that we can look at and one of them is our inclination this says that when we get to the moon our inclination is going to be three degrees that means we're going to have a prograde orbit when we get to the moon if you happen to notice that your inclination is higher than that let's say it's uh let's say you've gone all the way around and you're coming out the other side basically then you notice that we're still at the moon here. Oops, let me change like that. You notice we're still really close to the moon when we come here, but notice that our inclination says 172, and that is a retrograde inclination. Uh, if you don't understand what inclination means yet, I'll cover that in another video. 
but basically think of it this way zero degrees inclination is a perfect equatorial uh, is a perfect equatorial orbit in the prograde position and a 180 inclination would be a perfect equatorial orbit in the in the retrograde orbit so in other words you would be going backwards around the target the target and when you're going to the moon it doesn't actually matter because the moon has no atmosphere and its rotational uh, velocity is extremely slow so it doesn't matter in the slightest which inclination you have so you can have either one you want uh, but let me go ahead and switch that back around so that we do have a prograde orbit okay and the other thing that i'll mention is that uh, transex isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination so it's so when you see here that you have a minimum altitude at the moon of 142 kilometers know that by the time you actually warp time forward and get out to the moon this number it will have changed substantially i find that it changes usually by uh about, i think it's about 350 kilometers either plus or minus depending on if you have a a, a prograde inclination or retrograde inclination so i wouldn't worry about it too much as, in terms of trying to get it perfectly at you know if you if you want to have a 20 kilometer orbit when you get to the moon it doesn't do any good to sit here and try and set it while you're still orbiting earth so just get it somewhere close you know to somewhere between maybe 50 kilometers and 300 kilometers something like that because again by the time you go all the way to the moon it's going to have changed too much to uh to account for so now we're all set up we're ready to and get we're ready to do this burn now on stage uh, one or rather side one this side of transex in order to do the burn we want to press the uh, vw button and we can see when it's time to do, to do the burn that's going to be in 350 seconds and there's a really great feature in the newer version of transex that will make your life so much simpler if you go back and look at my three years worth of uh, orbiter videos you'll see that uh, we never had this until very recently but when you're in the view target mode press the var button actually it might be better better to go backwards minus vr yeah you never know there's a lot of variables here and you want to go to where it says auto center and we can now press plus and that will center the the that will center the vessel automatically for you and as an absolute beginner i totally recommend that you take advantage of that there's really no good reason not to but if you don't do that the way that you have to uh, set up the target otherwise let's go ahead and turn that off and let's just rotate to some arbitrary position like that so what we used to have to do before this uh, feature was introduced is you would uh, once you had the view target view up you would go to rotation and then you had to align the vessel so that that x was in the middle and the way that you uh, align that x is you it's kind of almost like um, when we do the uh, v, the, uh, the docking and you've got that plus sign in the in the x that you have to get to the center it's the same thing here we have to get this x to the center and since it's down here to the to the since it's to the down and left we need to yaw we need to pitch down and we need to yaw left so i'm going to yaw left and pitch down and that will bring that x up to the center Like that and you might even want to do this one time or two times just to get a feel for it but um, again now that we have this wonderful auto center feature I totally recommend that you just use that so auto center is on and it'll just give it a second to uh, to uh, orient it tries to be a, it tries to be fuel efficient so it doesn't you know use a lot of RCS to get to get into position quickly and once that's centered we can uh, kind of just press time warp here and we're going to begin the burn when the uh, begin burn is uh, zero and there is another feature that we can take advantage of but we'll talk about it in another video and that's where you can have burn time calculator do that burn for you but uh, we don't want to get too automatic yet so just warp time forward and watch carefully the begin burn when it gets down to maybe 15 seconds, make sure you come back out of time warp, eh, probably 10 seconds. 
come out of time warp now get ready to go full power on the main and burning and then I've got the uh, engines locked it's a pretty large burn so we can press T to warp time forward but be very careful not to go to a hundred never go to a never go to a hundred when you're doing these kinds of burns and then watch the Delta V and as it gets down close to the bottom you can press the R key on the keyboard to come back out of time warp I'm gonna do that now something else I'll mention before we had auto center uh, during the burn you would actually have to rotate the vessel manually so I can't stress enough how great this feature is and it's amazing to me that it took like 10 years to get it because TransX is pretty old so again just warping time forward getting to the end of the burn and when you get really close to the bottom make sure you come you know start uh, reducing the engine thrust and when you've got maybe five meters left something like that five you know two to five meters left go ahead and kill the main engines then turn off auto center now press VW to come over to maneuver and then press VAR to get through your variables and now we're going to turn maneuver mode off and when we turn maneuver mode off we're going to see this is going to update substantially so maneuver mode off and you can see now that according to the encounter view we're, we're way off and you might be wondering well why is that well it's because we left ourselves a couple meters shy of what the transex plan told us to do but the reason we like to do that is because we always have to refine the burn when we get to the bottom so let's just rotate back to perfectly prograde now switch to translation now just use uh, your translation which is probably just going to be prograde so that's going to be the number six and just translate in the last little bit of delta v that you need in order to get your minimum altitude back down to uh, you know a low number the, the thing is if you let trans if you carry out the whole burn in transx until you get all the way down to uh, you know zero you may run the risk of overshooting for one thing um, and the other thing is no matter what you do you're going to have to do some kind of refinement so when the burn gets down to where you just have you know maybe maybe two meters is too much but when you get down to like one meter go ahead and kill the kill the burn and then just turn maneuver mode off that's important because if you don't turn maneuver mode off you're not going to see the updates over here in the encounter view so and then turn maneuver mode off and then again just manually dial in that last little bit using just using your translation thrusters and again we're going to go for you know about 250 kilometers uh, you know again if you go all the way down to 20 you, you know it's it's not going to be accurate by the time you get out to the moon anyway take a sip of water okay now let's go ahead and warp time forward and go out toward the moon now the fact of the matter is uh, at this point you can just use your previous knowledge for how to get to the moon using you know when we used uh, just to uh, transfer MFD you can now so we did the burn with transex you can now shut off transex and just refer back to uh, the previous examples of going to the moon and just carry out that method we don't really need transex anymore going forward but I do want to show some things that we can do with transex as we uh, as we go forward so warping time forward and let's uh, bring up orbit MFD over here and uh, as before we'll keep an eye you know on our gravitational influence and we know that we we know that we're in the strong SOI of Earth because this is green and because the HUD says orbit Earth. Kill rotate again. And we don't get out of the strong influence until the gravitational influence drops to 0 0.50 or lower. Then the HUD will update at that time. Let me show you what let me show you when that happens. So there we're at 5.1 and it still says orbit Earth. Now we're at 5.0, and at some point here between 5.0 and 4.9, there it is we're now in the weak SOI of Earth and the HUD didn't update I'm not sure why usually the HUD will update automatically but if that happens uh, it's no big deal I mean if the if it doesn't switch to orbit Sun it's no big deal but we can we'll continue to go forward 
until we are in the uh, uh, the SOI, the sphere of influence of the moon. So just warping time forward. And we'll get into the SOI of the moon when the Earth's gravitational influence is pretty low. But the better way to know when you're going to reach the SOI of the moon is to bring, uh, press reference on orbit, MFD, and now reference the moon. And you can see it over here. And when this turn, when this gets to like 0.2, I think, is when we reach the uh, strong SOI of the moon. So let's just warp time forward to that point. Uh, I guess it's actually higher than that. It must be 4. There it is. So now we're in the strong SOI of the moon. And again, the HUD didn't update. I'm not sure why. Usually it does. But now uh, press HUD to bring the... Uh, to copy the HUD uh, data from Orbit MFD up to the HUD. And you'll notice that uh, we are, our minimum altitude here at the moon is saying it's gonna be 5,000, so it's actually off by a whole lot more than I thought it would be. And again, the way the way we solve this problem um, is no different than, than what we did when we came to the moon uh, using transfer MFD. Let's put in a little bit of yaw to uh, go to prograde just to look at the moon so we can see where we are. Power that side off for a second just so you can see the moon. Now you remember, uh, hopefully you remember from the other video that we talked about inward and outward burns. Inward burns are when you burn in toward the orbit. So if we imagine us, you know, if we imagine our, our orbit, our elliptical orbit is like that, and we're burning in toward the center of that orbit, that's an inward burn. Outward is the opposite. If you've got the circular orbit or the elliptical orbit and you're burning out away from the center of the orbit, then you're doing an outward burn. Inward and outward are used, are used to, at this point, to uh, raise and lower our minimum altitude at the moon. In this case, since our orbit, uh, since our orbital trajectory is showing that we're coming out away from the moon this way, it should be fairly logical to understand that we need to do an inward burn. We need to face in toward the moon or toward the center of our orbit in order to bring this down. So if we look at the external view, actually let me rotate, let me rotate to uh, 270 first. Okay, there we are, we're at 270, and let's look at that compared to the moon. So you can see that our engines are that way, our nose is that way. We are facing in toward the moon, and and if we do the burn in that direction, then obviously, it should be obvious, that's going to bring the orbit down, and that's what we want. If the trajectory was showing that we were slamming into the middle of the moon, then we would want to do the exact opposite. We would want to turn the vessel outward, so the nose would be facing that way, the engines would be facing that way, and we would be burning out away from the moon. So to do the inward burn, uh, we just were at 270, so we're just going to go full power on the main until the uh, PEA is down much lower than what it is right now. And we, we can bring the periapsis down all the way to probably 30 kilometers at this point. There's still some inaccuracy in orbit MFD between this position in this position, but it's re it's reasonably accurate. So let's go full power on the main, bring that PEA down. You can see what's happening with our orbit. And again, when you get close, back off the main, and we're pretty close there. So let's go forward a little bit more, and we'll go to uh, you know about 30 kilometers. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's good enough. So now we're saying that we're going to uh, come out to the uh, moon and arrive, you know, at periapsis, and our periapsis is going to be, you know, 32, and it looks like it's actually counting up. So we might actually want to uh, lower it a little bit more than that, assuming that it's going to continue trending upward. Translation. Rotation. So let's do that. We'll go back to the uh, 270 position here. And we'll just translate down. So since it's going up, and we're saying that we want an altitude of 20 kilometers, let's set it for 17.5. 
and then maybe by the time we get to periapsis it'll be closer to 20. These are just kind of some guessing games that we play. It's not really important. As long as your altitude is reasonable, it's, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. Okay, so now let's go prograde. Uh, yeah, hang on one second. I run into this problem every now and then where... where uh, orbit, uh, the, the prograde autopilot, like, forgets which, uh, which way is prograde. Just bear with me for a second. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember how I fix that. I think I go to the... Because you'll notice if I press prograde, it's currently going prograde relative to the Earth. And it's just a weird problem that I've, that I've had only recently. Um, and there, I remember fixing it somehow. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'll just do it manually. It's like it's like Orbiter doesn't realize that I'm now in the moon's strong SOI or something. Okay, so the last bit of uh, the last bit of maneuvering that we can do using Transex is uh, it's a bit optional. If you want, you can use the method that you're already familiar with that we did in the other Earth to Moon video where we brought up Burn Time Calculator and we let it circularize our orbit for us. But in the interest of learning more about Transex and learning how some of its different thing, how somehow how some of its different features work, we can set up our braking burn or our or orbit circularization burn using Transex. And I'll show how to do that. We're going to press VW to change from this uh, view encounter to view maneuver. And then we're going to turn maneuver mode on. And we're going to go through the variables. And the first variable that we want to go to is actually the date. Because we don't want to circularize our orbit right now, because we're way out here. We want to circularize our orbit once we get down to periapsis. So we want to set the date. And again, think, don't think of this necessarily just as date in terms of months and years and days. Think of this as also as time. So maneuver time. And we want to time the maneuver so that it's going to occur at periapsis. And we don't have to guess when that is, or we don't have to do any calculations. It's actually given to us right here, P-E-M-J-D. That's periapsis M-J-D. So we simply need to set the maneuver date or the maneuver time to that exact number, 56703.1492. And that's not very far into the future. So we don't want a course setting. If we use course, it'll change it by way too much. So let's go all the way down to ultra and we'll put it in that way and we could actually even use super for here at the start and we're going to go all the way to 1492 we're getting pretty close so now let's go down to ultra and now we're really close so let's go all the way to hyper and so you can see that these hyper and micro and they do come in handy in certain circumstances but um not like when we're doing the uh putting in the amount of prograde that we need to get to the moon, you, you probably would never go all the way to a micro setting. Okay, so there we go. 56703.1492. That's when we're saying we're going to do the burn. And the burn that we're going to do, I hit the wrong button. The burn we're going to do is a prograde, but it's going to be negative prograde because we're going to be, uh, we need to slow down and remember to uh, slow down, or you might even think of it this way, we're going to lower one side of our orbit. And how do we lower our orbit? If we go all the way back to the raising and lowering orbit video, we lower the orbit by turning the vessel 180 degrees away from prograde, facing against the direction of flight, and then burning the main engines. So we need to uh, put in negative prograde. But as we do that, you can see here that this view isn't the best. We can't really see very well what's going on. So it helps if we press VW to get over to setup. Notice we just go in a circle, you know, encounter, maneuver, target, setup. Then press VAR to go through these variables. And the one that we want here is scale to view, and we want to view the target. Notice the, uh, the default, I believe, is all, 
but if we scale to view down to target, we get a zoomed in view of the moon and we have a much better idea of what's going on. Now that we can see this a lot better, let's press VW to get back over to the maneuver. Now we'll continue adding in negative prograde until the orbit, you can see it's coming down, it's much more circular. Now this isn't exactly what we want, it's close, but let's uh, do an adjustment to change from course. Let's go all the way down to fine. And we need to add in a little bit more negative prograde because you can see that orbit, you know, we're really close into the moon here, but then we kind of come out and we're probably out to 80 or 100 or even 200 kilometers out there. So let's just continue adding in negative prograde to bring that down. But what we're looking for is the hypothetical PED. You'll notice that right now it says 1.757. Just keep adding in negative prograde until that changes. When you see that change, then you've added in enough. And you can actually, if you want, you can do an adjustment to go to a slightly finer setting and then just press plus plus one or two times until it bumps back up to whatever the number previously was. Now we know that when we get down to that point and do the burn, we will have an orbit that's uh, very circular, if not perfectly circular. Now we need to press uh, VW to view the target uh, and notice that the burn isn't for another 20,000 seconds. So we're going to warp time forward to get closer to that point. And I'm going to go ahead and do this all in this video, even though I'm over the 30 minute point, but I just want to wrap it up here. But there's a little trick that we have with TransX that we need to do. And I'll show you what that is here in a minute. Notice our PEA is increasing. That's fine. Uh, TransX, when you set maneuvers up, they're only reliable for, you know, maybe three to 400 seconds at a time. So when you warp time forward by this much, uh, you have a lot of you have a lot of room for error. So when we get down to just a thousand seconds, about about to this point, we're going to come back to real time. Now we're going to press VW to come back over to the uh, maneuver. And this is very important that you don't forget to do this. Then press VAR to toggle through the variables. And notice here it says updates. So we're going to press plus plus to do an update. And notice what's happened. Notice that uh, our orbit is now kind of shifted weirdly. So we don't want to do the burn exactly as we had it set up. Because if we do, then the outcome is going to be this. So now we want to just kind of make a small change to, to the way we're going to do this burn. First thing we're going to do is go to the date. And notice that the uh, part of the problem is the date has changed from the time that we were, you know, however many seconds out we were to here. It's gone from uh, five, uh, 1495 to, to uh, or rather it's gone from 1492 to 1495. So we need to make that change also here. So we're just gonna press plus plus until that says 1495. Now, our, now the timing of our burn is more accurate and you can see that the, uh, the shape of our orbit is now much better than it was, you know, even just back here because now you can see that we're, we're actually it looks like we're hitting the moon here so if we do the if we did the burn according to what we originally had set up then we wouldn't have a circular orbit so again setting the uh, the date correctly to uh, 1495 and if we want we can kind of even look at the the prograde again uh, but it looks to me like it's pretty well set yeah I don't think we need to do any adjustments there but I'm just, again, looking at that hypothetical PED, you know, at that point where it changes, and then back off by one or two clicks. Okay, we're now ready to commit to this burn. So let's press VW to get over to the target, and then VAR until you see, until you see the, uh, whatever it's called, auto center. Now let's warp time forward. Um, actually, one thing I'm going to do too, <clears throat> since since TransX does have a fair amount of inaccuracy to it, when we get all the way down to 300 seconds, I'm going to check one more time, go back to real time, and I'm going to go back to uh, the, uh, the uh, maneuver view, and I just want to do an update again, just to see if that timing has changed at all, and it hasn't, it's still pretty good. But that's just something to note about, uh, and this, is, this applies to other MFDs as well. When you set up maneuvers really far in the future, you know, 1,000 seconds or 2,000 seconds, especially 10 or 20,000 seconds, 
it's it's very important to check on those maneuvers when you're much closer to the actual time to do the burn because things will have changed. All right, we are uh, just 300 seconds away from time to begin the burn. So we can either press auto center or we can start orienting the vessel manually. I would recommend getting in the habit of when you're this far out away from a burn, just start rotating manually and then use a little bit of time warp. That'll save fuel. Because we know that this is going to be, you know, retrograde. So we're more or less going to be in the retrograde position. So we're trying to get that X centered. And if we if we do most of the rotation ourselves, we can save the autopilot the work of, of doing the rotation for us. And it'll just save us a little bit of fuel. So we go up like that. And that's good enough. And now we can go ahead and definitely turn on auto center and let it do it, let it do the job. Except I'm not sure why it's rolling the vessel. That's a bit odd. And you can see the earth back there behind us. And uh, yeah, we've got time. So one thing we can do here too, um, if we bring up burn time calculator, let me actually go down to uh, 0 0.1 for a second. This is this only applies to the very newest versions of burn time calculator. So again, if you don't have the newer ones, go get them. I'll put a link in the description down below. The, one of the very newest versions of burn time calculator has this feature where it can get the information from Transex. So if I press get over here, you'll notice that it uh, it copied the delta V 834. Basically, it actually it, it copies it a bit short and it does that on purpose copies the delta V from burn time calculator, and then it copies the time to begin the burn. So that is a way it automates the burn for you. And uh, since we did the burn manually at Earth, then I thought it would be worth showing this method as well. So you set the maneuver up, turn auto center on, bring up burn time calculator, press get, and then when it's time to do the burn, it will do it for you. And there it goes, doing the burn. Let's come back out of time warp. Let's go ahead and warp time forward some more because we still got a bit to go. Now we're about done. Burn's done. First thing to do, very, very important, shut auto center off. As soon as the burn's done, never forget to do that. Turn auto center off. Then press VW till you get over to view maneuver. And turn maneuver mode off. Very important that you don't forget to do that. And now you can see how your orbit looks. If we bring up orbit MFD, we can see that we're here at the moon, and we have an orbit that's very, it's pretty circular. It's a little bit off. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's a little higher than what we uh, wanted it to be. Our target was about 20 kilometers, but we're a little higher than that. Okay, and then from here, it's just simply a matter of lining up with uh, Brighton Beach like we did. Uh, actually, we should, if we were going to land at Brighton Beach, we would have wanted to do that base alignment as part of our mid-course correction, but none of that's different than in the previous example, so you can always refer back to that previous example for doing that. So we're not going to take the time to actually land here. I will show another example, at least one more, of how to use Transex to go from the Earth to the Moon, and we'll, we'll just we'll change it up a little bit. You know, we'll do an off-plane transfer, and we'll also talk about how to align the base uh, while you're still at Earth. And then we'll uh, learn how to use Transex to go from the Moon back to the earth, which is actually, uh, it's a little bit simpler almost. All right, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the do not like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. See you in the next video.